Hey guys, Josh here, and today I'm going to be giving you a little tutorial on how to make your own custom civilizations and leaders for Civ 6. Using my handy little template that I've provided in the description, hopefully I've made this simple enough for even a toddler to do. I'm going to go through step by step and tell you what you're going to need and how you're going to do it. Right, so starting off, we're going to need to open Steam and install the Sid Meier's Civilization 6 development assets and the tools. Uh, the assets are quite large, so just be patient with them. They might take a while to download, but the tools are fairly simple. So we just open the tools and go to Mod Buddy. And this just kind of opens up um, its own modified version of Visual Studio. If you've ever used that for kind of programming, you'll know what that is. So if you want to just hit New Mod, uh, you want to select Empty Mod for this particular tutorial, and then we'll find a place to save it. So for instance, if we just save it inside its own base folder for now, that's fine. And we're going to call it um, New Civ Tut YouTube. There we are. Hit OK on that. So for this tutorial, uh, as an example, I'm going to just make whales, I guess, just, you know, just something to work with. So if we just call it um, New Civ Whales uh, by Josh, adds whales to the game, etc. There we go, and we press finish. You can change all this later, so don't worry about it. Right, so now that opens up a empty mod folder here, so all this has in it is just the art file, which is uh, important, so you'll need that. Uh, the rest of it though is absolutely empty. So what we're going to want to do is just going to add some of the core folders that my template uses. So art defs, oh hang on, art defs, there we are. And then again add new folder core, add new folder textures, add new folder xlps. There we are, and now you're pretty much good to go. So once you've downloaded my um, template, which should be in the description below, uh, if I just bring it over here, this is what it'll look like. So as you can see, the same kind of folder structure. So now what we need to do is we need to add the files from within this. So as you can see in art defs, there's folder, there's files in core, there's files in textures, there's files, etc. We need to add those into the mod itself within Visual Studio so the Visual Studio knows when it's compiling to include all those files. So if we add existing items to art defs, uh, go to my desktop where I believe it is saved, there we are. Okay, so now we go inside of art defs and simply just highlight what we want to add and press add. There we go, and they're there, nice and simple. And just rinse and repeat the same again for core and the same for the XLPs. Oh, that's a new folder, I didn't mean to do that. There we go, so existing items to the XLPs, add all these in, and then add the existing textures. There we go. Now you might be thinking, since I've already given you the template, why do you need to make your own um, mod in this Visual Studio? Can't you just use what I've given you? The, the problem is with that is uh, because of the way it compiles the textures and the XLPs into an art defs, uh, Visual Studio actually creates kind of like a texture database um, after it's compiled it, which is required for the game to have custom art. So if you want to have you know a picture of your leader or a picture of your background or icons, you're going to need to do it through Visual Studio. Uh, through the mod tools you can't do it just in like a notepad file or something that wouldn't work right so now uh, I'm going to show you how this works basically because now now you've got this set up you're pretty much good to go although later on before we compile it there are some things you need to configure before it will even work so you need to stand by to the end of the video for those um, because if you were to say build this right now you'd get a bunch of errors even though it's a complete mod it's just not configured properly yet so for instance Let's go into our config. Here we go. This uh, here is kind of what you see in the leader select screen. So as you can see, you've got your player data, your player items, like you know your unique units, your unique buildings, etc. Uh, ignore this. This is just for um, kind of map spawning. 
So as you can see, I've left all of the variable names, like the tags for XML, I've left them all extremely vague. So, you know, civ custom. So um, if you wanted, for instance, to change your civilization's name, you would simply highlight civ custom, hit control H to replace all, which opens up this little thing up here. Uh, current changes the current project. So it changes that reference everywhere because basically that's all XML is all the all the SQL is on this database it's just it's just references which reference um, it bits of information it just all links together you know to SQL you know. right so if we wanted to say for instance have our civilization name as Wales we'd change that to Wales make sure you use all caps because it's um, tags and then we press replace all there we go and that's changed that to Wales now so as you can see that's now replaced it down here. So player item civilization underscore Wales, etc. Uh, JRA is just my mod tag because it stops there from being conflicts with other modders who may have similar files to me. Uh, you'll want to change that as well. So if you highlight JRA again and hit replace and replace it with I don't know uh, you like you know whatever your initials are. So like BTG or something. I don't know. There we go. And then if we go down to uh, game text, this is where all of the um, all of the uh, you know this is where the actual in-game text is, is stored so you see here these uh, these tags reference this so for instance this is the the name of your civilization so if we change that to um, Wales so now when you load up the game your civilization will be Wales and then if we go down here so as you can see here, this is the name of all of your cities, so you can change them, they'll be randomly generated. Uh, here we've just got some, you know, stuff you can change in the Civilopedia, you know, stuff that isn't exactly essential for the game, but you'll need if you want to truly, you know, make a customizable Civ. And then we've got the kind of descriptive word, the adjective, um, things like that, so, you know, you'll need to change it up to like Welsh. So you have Wales, it's Welsh, you know, things like that. You need to have the adjectives in there, whereas it looks silly when it prints it in the game. Uh, scrolling down, then you hear you've got the citizen names. So in like the kind of gossip tags, the little panels that come up saying, for instance, like, I don't know, some guy has discovered that France is building a barracks, that kind of thing. So those are the names that will come up there, once again, randomly chosen. So you can give it men, modern men, female, and modern female. Now here's the name of your leader, so our leader name, I don't know, let's just call it Sheep. Um, you know, that's, that's who leads Wales, I'm pretty sure. Uh, there you go, this is the kind of, this is the text here that Scene Bean would read out if it was a real sieve, you know, the bit that appears in, in the loading screen. Uh, here again, more Civilopedia stuff. And then this is your civilization's uh, dialogue. So if there was an AI playing as Wales, then this is what they would say when they do the different things. Uh, it's got tags here, which, you know, like little comments, which tell you what that particular, um, <clears throat> what that particular line of dialogue is for. So for instance here, when you first meet someone else, it says, the AI will say that. And that's pretty much the game text. Uh, if we scroll down right to the bottom, here we go, it's just the name of the traits. Once again, all it is really is just, um, it actually just declares here the text, which is then associated with that tag, which then obviously that tag will be used in everywhere where that name needs to be used. Um, also the name of your building down here. I'm sure you'll be able to work it all out, it's, it's all pretty simple. Uh, next thing we need to go to is if you act well, okay, yeah, let's get to the let's get to the the beef of it. So this is the game defines. This is where you know kind of all of the main configuration happens. This is where you know the the like the mechanics go down. So uh, as you can see here, it's all linked up um, all nicely. Here we go. This is where you can choose your agenda. So we've got the agenda type with your shoulder on it, that's Gorgos. Um, and down here, you know, you can choose your um, secondary agenda, agenda civilized. Now, I think I would say, when you're ever editing this, a good, really good thing to do is if we find, hang on, let me just do it in my other screen. If we find, uh, here we go. If you go to your, you know, your common folder, Sid Meier Civ 6 base assets, which is, you know, your actual, civilization game files and then you go to the database not the database sorry the gameplay and then data 
here we go. This is kind of what you'd be using to kind of steal <laughs> steal the kind of words things from. Because, for instance, if you wanted to have Gandhi's agenda in there, then obviously you're not going to know. So say, for instance, you wanted to have Gandhi's agenda in there, you're not going to know, like, the tag for Gandhi's agenda off the top of your head. So you need to go into the appropriate XML file, which I believe is leaders. So if we open up leaders, uh, and then we find, I believe it's called Peacekeeper, so we can search for it. There we are, look, here we go. A list of everyone's, um, of everyone's agenda. And I'm sure you can work out from in-game knowledge what they do. So if we were to then, all you'd have to do then is just simply copy agenda underscore peacekeeper and paste that into there. There you go. So now you just change the agenda type. Uh, a lot of kind of, you know, a lot, all of your references for all the modifiers and all the kind of, you know, code, you just basically can just steal straight out of the core game files. Uh, here we go. This is quite a good one. Uh, this is the colors. This is how you choose, uh, you know, like the actual, like the colors of like your cities and your units and things. So for instance, it's RGB. So if we wanted to have it, I don't know, let's just do something crazy. Let's go, um, let's have it one, five, zero, and then have that as eight and eight. I don't even know what that will make, probably like orange and yellow or something. Oh well, we'll see when we get into the game. Uh, so all, as you can see, if you were to leave all of these kind of tags in their current state, all these kind of reference tags, uh, this would work uh, because I've obviously kept it all very like you know generic. So that obviously lead, leader and sort BTG leader custom colors, and then it defines all the colors there. So you could literally just go through this and just change like the stuff you, that was different about your sort of like you know the fun stuff. And it would still work, but you wouldn't then be able to make a second sieve because you'd have conflicts. Because obviously they'd have the same names, and then it just wouldn't work. So it's better to just replace them, you know, as you go. Or if you, you know, only want to make one sieve, don't bother because it's quite, you know, it can get quite complicated. So here we go down to the loading info. So once again, it's all just kind of um, declaring. Uh, as you, uh, well, we'll get into the art later. But played one man. That's where we're not seeing bean chats. Um, here we go, this is just defining um, all the city names and all the thing names, don't worry I've done all that for you, nice guy. Um, there we go, keep this as well, civilize it, it's all pretty much the same to be honest, capital names, just defining that the first city you type is the name of the capital. Uh, this is just um, defining the background image for your diplomacy screen, you know when you like chatting to the AI, what's behind them, etc. Now these are the traits. This is the probably the most interesting part about making your own sieve is um, choosing their abilities. So for instance, this is the trait of the leader at the moment. I've got it set up so all it gives you an extra economic slot. So as you can see here, the uh, it's the, I've named the trait and it is defined as being a trait. I've then given it defined its name and its description here. I've then um, defined its modifier ID which is there and that modifier ID is then given a type this is the actual modifier you can steal this from the modifiers XML file in the database where I showed you before in the sieve files and then you just simply choose the arguments uh, so for instance there you go so its government slot type is increased by a slot economic there you go and then another example of that would be down here where I've set it up so your troops get um, gold based on uh, the killed units uh, combat strength as well as 50% additional XP same idea down here you've got the arguments and then this is just kind of setting it up up here um, you, you might want to look at kind of uh, policy cards or other leaders traits in the Civ game files to kind of understand how each modifier works it just it just takes a while of kind of tinkering around to kind of w find out like you know how each modifier works and um, how to put it in but for instance, if I wanted to make this give you 200% gold or 200% experience, it'd just be as simple as doing that, really. You just need to learn how the modifiers work. So that's the um, that's basically all of the in-game stuff. Oh yeah, here yeah, they don't you don't need to worry about this. This is just um, defining the traits as well. So it gives it, it gives the the said the, the said traits to the civilization. 
icons. This is just where I've set this all up for you, so you don't need to worry about this, but this is just defining um, your icons. The icons on this game work really weirdly. You need to make your own icon for every single different size. Like, I don't know why that's a thing. It just seems a bit inefficient, but yeah, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, that's the um, icon for your building. And speaking of which, this is the custom building. Uh, this one's a little simpler. It's written in XML, not SQL. So um, it's a lot simpler to understand, but it's a lot more prone to bugs because if you miss out, a, I don't know, a, a, an equal sign or a, or you know, you spell something even slightly wrong, you'll just get errors everywhere, and it won't even it won't even tell you what kind of error. It'll just say that something crashed. I mean, XML is not great for this, but um, it's just a bit simpler for doing buildings and things. So as you can see here, got the buildings modifiers, the same as the traits for our civilization. Uh, you can change up here um, its yields. So for instance, it gives you one production. Here's its great person points. It gives you um, one great general point. And then at the top here, this is just where it's defining its kind of name, how much it costs to build, can you buy it, uh, who recommends it, what its maintenance is, and then obviously its trait. Um, you can add all kinds of things, you can make it give you amenities, you can change its yields, you can basically, the, the, the great thing about these modifier IDs is you can literally make any aspect of this game do anything you want as long as you know the modifier and how it works. So for instance you can make it so when your unit kills someone it gives free amenities and 10 signs to every single city or something like that, but obviously you know, you'd have to know how the modifier works, you just need to kind of look at how other, mod how other already built into the game modifiers work in the files and then kind of learn from there. Um, because obviously there's no you know definitive um tool yet for doing this for say newcomers. You still have to have some knowledge of how the system works. Uh, art defs. These are quite complicated, so just kind of um you know don't change anything in here unless obviously you're replacing the name of your leader uh, or using the control H scheme I showed you earlier because that's all kind of set up just right. Uh, now here is um arguably the fun part the um, the art files. Hang on, I'll just split my recording. Right, we're back. Okay, so here's art files. So I've set these all up. So you have this, the custom sieve icon. So that's the kind of flag uh, that will be a display of your cities and um, in the background of the loading screen. And then you've got here your leader icon, so that's your the, the face of your person who appears in a little circle to the top right when you meet them. And then we've got the background and then obviously the actual leader themselves. So if we open up this, oh an important thing to say is um, Civ is quite funny about what files it accepts. It only accepts D dot DDSs, but it only accepts dot DDSs which are compiled in a certain way. Uh, I know there's a um, GIMP does, has has a uh, plugin for it, um, but I use Paint.net, which I know it's. Def I think its default DDS plugin can do it. So if you just hang on, if I um, so this is the background that will go behind our leader. So if I just oh hang on, I was meant to do that. There you go. I'm meant to open it here, and then just steal that. Put it in here, keep the canvas size, keep it at 1080p. Uh, if you were probably really you know wanting to have uh, plenty of kind of uh, scalability, you probably do it 4K and then let it scale down or up or whatever, but you know, I play on 1080p, so 1080p is fine for me. Uh, there we go, so that will be our leader's background, and then yeah, when we save it, we click Save As, save it as a direct draw surface, or DDS, uh, keep the name the same, and I want to replace it, yes, and then you want to choose it in the settings here, A8, B8, G8 rate mate, <laughs> choose that one, and then hit OK, and that saves it in a format that Civ6 understands. Okay, so now if we go down to oh, speaking of which, actually, uh, if we go back to the config, probably shouldn't change um, the name of this for this version because it means I'd have to then rename all of my uh, all of my icon names and everything which is you know a bit of a nuisance so if I just change this back for example there we go so yeah you can keep it like this uh, because as you can see here all my icons and things are named after that as well and they all need to have a kind of similar naming format 
So we've done our leader background here, as we can see. Uh, this happens to also be identical to, and just sort this by details, this happens to also be identical to the leader background, so you can also save the same file over that, obviously while changing the name. There we go, so down we go down here now, the same file, saved again. There we go, sorted. Right, now we need to do the actual leader cutout, so we can find here is the fullback leader. If we open up this, this is the kind of template I've used that this is quite a good size for uh, people who stand up straight or you know kind of like if it was like a, a, like a body shot of someone uh, you can put it in here it's about 400 by a thousand or something this is it's quite a weird shape but it's, it's what I found fits best in the loading screen etc. So for instance if we were to add our leader in so this is the leader of Wales as you can see, just bunk him right in the middle somewhere. It'll look a bit silly, but I mean, I'm sure if you want to, you can make it look nice in your um, in your versions. Once again, hit save. Save with that setting. Important, otherwise you'll get all kinds of horrendous errors. Uh, and then also, this one is also the same as leader custom neutral, so you can save over that also. There we go. So then when you get into the game, you'll have that sheep over the green grass background. And uh, now what we want to do is we can move on to the leader, the leader icon. Here we go. So you open up the 2561. This is the, um, this is kind of the main one you'll be working with. But then after, obviously after you've done this, you'll then need to scale it down, which is a bit annoying, but you know. You gotta it takes you gotta scale it down and save it for each new size, which is stupid, but it's just how the game works. So if we open up the sheep, uh we grab him, dunk him in here, keep the canvas size, and I found the best way to do this is because of how it's kind of like a it's kind of like a circular it's like a circular little portrait it has. You just do this, grab the circle tool, put it about uh, about there, I'd say, you leave a little bit of space at the sides, and just cut that make a new layer, delete the old thing, put him there, there we are. And then another thing you can do is have two of him and then if you go down to the bottom, the bottom one, there we go, you give him a nice little, I don't know, let's have say, uh, let's have a little green, little green background for him. Or oh, actually, no, it's, I don't know, something like that, doesn't really matter. There we go. So then that is our logo. If you want to go, you can give it a fancy border as well, but uh, it does have a default gold one in the game, which is kind of like 3D and part of the kind of menu, so you don't need to do that much. Uh, you can fiddle around with this, obviously. There's always ways to make it look nicer, sharper, you know, more zoomed in, I don't know, whatever, but this is just as an example. So we save that uh, as a DDS over, it was the leader custom 256. There we go, save that. And then flatten it because obviously it doesn't accept layers. And then what we need to do is resize it, uh, maintaining its aspect ratio down to 80. Hit OK, and that'll resize that down to 80. And then you then save that over the custom 80 DDS and rinse and repeat for all of the uh, square resolution sizes and the file names. So, for instance, you know, 64, 55, 50, do the same for all of those. Right then, so that's how you do your leader's um, your leader's uh, face. Now, if we want to do our sieve flag, so we open up this again, delete the black, and because it needs to have a transparent background, because so it, you know it looks nice in menus and things. For this, we it needs to be a completely white image. So if we copy this in, keep the canvas size, and this is what appears in kind of the middle of your flags. And that kind of thing, and also, yeah, also above your cities for enemies as well. So if we just dump that in the middle, don't have it touching the sides because of just how it orientates in the game, and then just obviously, yeah, just change it in white. Uh, I think I could probably do that with saturation. Change its lightness up to max. There we go. You can use black in this as well. White gets replaced by your sieve's chosen primary color, but black will always stay the same. 
So you could give it a black outline or you could give it black details like eyes or something if you want it to be fancy. Like, uh, I don't know, for instance, I want to just give it a little black eye like that. There we go. Then that would show up in the game. So now if we save this as uh, a DDS again for the icon Civ 256, replace that, hit OK. There we go. And then again, do the same, resize it down to 80 then save it over 80 and hit OK there we go and then do that the same for all of those and hopefully um, if you haven't you know messed up any references everything should already be linked so in the icons here where it defines all this uh, the icons should be loaded in for them to then be applied to the leader and to the civilization from the atlases up here uh, so that should then work hopefully and to be honest with you like that's pretty much it that's like the bare bones of it um, if you absolutely you know you can go through and change whatever you like as long as you keep the references the same or you know how to change them you can just change any kind of variables you want right I'm going to split the video again and then I'm going to explain how to compile and run this Right then, okay, so here we go, we're back. Uh, now I'm going to teach you how to successfully compile this. Uh, you only need to do this once, this part, so don't worry about it. You just need to go to Project in the top left here, hit Properties, uh, go to Front End Actions, and this is where you're telling your mod kind of what you've done and how it should affect the game. So you want to add an action to update the database, and then you want to add and select the file uh, this is the front end action, so this is what's done here. So you need to change that to config. Again, add actions, uh, update the this time the icons. Again, add icons, add here to text. Change that to change the text. There we go, as we can see. Again, add another one to update the art. Oh, my bad. Update the art with the art dependency file. Here we go, mod art dependency file. There we go. And I think that's everything for the thing. Oh, you could also, just in case, uh, add, if you get errors, add the building there to the database updater. Uh, you shouldn't need it, but I'd do it just in case. In game actions basically the same except instead of doing the config for the database you do the game defines because this is actually what happens in game there you definitely will need to change add the building so then we go got game define the buildings in there uh, in here we want to update the icons with your icons uh, choose the text update that with game text add another action in and update the art with the oh no <laughs> with the mod art dependency file which is down there there we go right sorted so now that's all ready uh, you can here if you go in mod info you can choose all this and change all this uh, oh here you go this bit's quite important this is your mod ID so this needs to be unique to every other mod ever otherwise you'll have probably errors or something so hit new to generate a new one and then you need to copy that and go into your modart.xml here and paste this into there. There you go. And make sure this name here has to match the name that's in your properties here. Otherwise, you will get errors. There we go. All done. So now I hit File, Save All, Build, and then build this one here. And let's hope we don't get any errors should take probably about eight seconds or something it's not that long uh, it'll say down here when it's finished there we go build succeeded okay right join me again when I go into the game to test this one out right guys we're now in the game let's test out and see if this worked and will we have errors we're about to find out um, once you build the uh, mod, um, the compiler puts it automatically into the right directory so you don't need to worry about copy and pasting mods, it, it moves them all and puts everything where it needs to be. 
So if we go single player, we create a game. And then there we go. There he is. There's our boy Sheep. Uh, as you can see, you can select him. Uh, you can choose this background as well. Um, you can choose it to be anything you like, but I like to just use the default kind of Civ map because it you know, kind of keeps it in key with the rest of it. So we just choose our settings. As you normally would, you've got your little description here, and then let's start the game. Right, so in the loading screen, as you can see, got a nice little green hills background. Got a little sheepy. Uh, got his little description. Got all of the description of kind of his items, his unique um, um, buildings and units will be down here. As you can see, his colours, which have turned out to be green and red, uh, out the back here. He's got his little dragon icon there. Now we set it as white, but it's come out red, obviously, because it sets it to the colour of your sieve, which is nice. So if we begin the game, as you can see, this is what our unit colours look like. Uh, and if we click on our diplomacy screen, once again, there's a little sheepy. There's uh, the gr green hills. And, yep, yeah, we've got all of our text down here. Now, if this was an AI and we just met them, they'd obviously they'd chat to us with the dialogue we gave them. And this would be the screen where you'd know you'd declare war and you'd make deals, etc and you'd have this background. And if you settle a city, there you go, Cardiff, authentic Welsh name. Uh, that's, the, that's the name of my capital, so it'll always be the first city I settle will always be Cardiff. Then obviously you've got your scouts and my unique building right there, which I can build. You can set that to unlock whenever you want or you know, cost how much you want, do whatever you want, it's all up to you. You can have unique units, just go wild, it's up to you. But yeah. That is a tutorial on how to make your first Civilization VI um, custom Civ and Leader. Thank you very much for watching and good luck modding.